everyone, I'm Ash, your one-stop shop for weird news drops and cultivator of fine lizard skin in my spare time. And it's time once more to dip our collective toes into the ever-roiling tides of film and TV strangeness. Now, in this brand spanking new episode of Insane Things, <laughs> that's back. And this week saw the confirmation that the Lego Movie sequel includes two Chris Pratt characters taking pot shot at Chris Pratt's recent career in true Deadpool style, and somebody thought that XXX4 with Vin Diesel was a smart idea. We got bloody wrestling matches, Stranger Shrek remakes, and that time Rocky nearly met the actual Pope. Oh, yes. Honestly, you don't know the half of it. What a week I have had. And I'm still working on the intro, you know, after birthing the Kazooniverse last week, so I've had to swallow my pride and hold my breath to go and see the big giraffe himself. Ominous. Roll the intro, my faithful servant and editor, Heppel. Giraffe father. Sorry, what was that? Giraffe father. Yeah, it's a good pun. That just needed it said twice. What can I do for you today on the day of my son's circumcision? What do you want? You sound like you've got. You sound like you've got a bit of a mouthful. All right. <laughs> Tea bags. Whoa. Yeah, my mouth is very, no. very sour right now. Ooh. What do you want? I actually, uh, you know what I want. I've come here. I've been having using this wrestling intro. I'm, I'm struggling. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I know. You just basically made my entire format. That's great. I love a bit of theft me, a little bit of, little bit of banter stealing. So what do you want? You want a new intro? I need help with my intro. I know a guy who knows a guy. I, I can I'll probably sort you out. I know I shouldn't, since you are a thief, but... Anyway, right. But it probably won't be ready until next week, so don't expect it to happen this episode. Alright? Just saying that now. Now, take your tea bags and off you go. Oh. Oh. They are real Oh, wet. they're warm! Mmm. Mmm. Get out. It's my son's circumcision. You're not meant to be here. Oh, sorry. Mm, Good luck, you. Ewan. Eight. Dick Van Dyke paid Disney to cast him twice. With the Mary Poppins sequel heading into cinemas in December and definitely aiming to be the best film of the year, sorry Thanos, you big purple ball sack, original star Dick Van Dyke has revealed he had to go to extraordinary measures to convince Walt Disney to let him have two roles in the film. Van Dyke famously paid Bert the Chimney Sweep and also ancient chairman of the bank, Mr. Dawes Sr. In an interview, he told Lynn manuel Miranda for The Hollywood Reporter that he said, he'd work for free. He actually offered to do it for nothing, but instead was forced to pay up $4,000 to actually get himself as a double feature. Disney apparently wouldn't budge on casting him even when Van Dyke was asking for the role, so he got a bit of green persuasion from the actor. And to be fair to Van Dyke, he says he would do it again. Usually paying for roles comes afterwards when the critical responses, who have lots of things to say about your Cockney accent, get involved, but this man is the exception to the rule. Seven. What if Shrek was remade by 200 filmmakers? That is not a question you've asked yourself before, is it? That's not a question anyone has asked before, until very recently in actual fact, but it's happening and there's nothing you can do about it. Well, f and cooties, this is going to be a ride. This is going to be a ride. Remarkably, Shrek Retold is a project put together by 3GI, bringing together a collective of 200 filmmakers to remake the animated classic in pretty much the most batch way possible. The collective were also responsible for the annual Shrek Fest are essentially making a scene-by-scene -scene remake which will allow each creator to express their own uh, unique style. Why mess with the classic, you ask? Why? I don't know. Did Smash Mouth die for this? No. They aren't dead, but they didn't die for this either. Honestly, looking at the trailer, when they say unique, they mean nightmarish and horrifying because the entire thing looks like a fever dream spiced with strong hallucinogenics. Seriously, if the idea of 200 idiosyncratic personalities trying to work together to make a film sounds weird, that's right, the trailer proves it. Nothing is sacred anymore, and nightmares are real and living. It's... And of course, if anything is going to get a confused John Travolta, it is this. Six, Venom's about to make $800 million. Hey everyone, remember when Venom was first reviewed and the critics were falling over themselves to say it was a massive turkey and absolutely terrible and what on earth was Tom Hardy doing? <laughs> well, he was making a movie that grossed almost $800 million around the world and which is still picking up money thanks to its late Chinese release. If it takes $40 million more, it'll be the highest grossing Spider-Man film ever to go along with its most watched Spider-Man movie trailer ever. That's pretty good considering there isn't a Spider-Man in sight. This is literally a film in which Tom Hardy tells someone he will bite their limbs off 
and let them roll around like a turd on the wind. Firstly, turds don't float in the wind, unless you eat a lot of polystyrene. And secondly, that might be legitimately the worst line in any movie ever. It was in the trailer, and yet the film has still taken $800 million. Call everything off. Call everything off. It's also, the box office result is literally going to lead a film about turds in the wind, isn't it? Start collecting the packing peanuts up, guys. You've got some eating to do. Five, Tom Cruise, Scientology Enforcer. Now, let's preface this point with a disclaimer. This is a story that's appeared elsewhere thanks to former Scientologist and King of Queens star Leah Remini, who notoriously left the church and turned whistleblower. Ooh, an excuse. So if there is disgruntled Scientologist watching this, go and speak to her, not me. I'm just the messenger. Anyway, to put this delicately, as well as claiming that his life is controlled to the point that he's not allowed to see any magazines with anti-Scientology messages in, Remini has revealed that Tom Cruise is actively involved in punishing fellow Scientologists. Her most recent revelations claim he's treated basically like a god in the church and that on one occasion she was told by a senior figure who was there that church founder David Miscavy threatened to bring Cruise in to kick their f***ing asses. So in other words, he's basically the church's in-house Terminator, or something. She said it, not me. Remember that. Four, Halloween was gonna kill Laurie Strode off. When the new take on Halloween was originally announced, it was presented as an opportunity to close out Laurie Strode's story, as well as introducing a new generation of heroes to deal with Michael Myers, because let's face it, he was never gonna die, was he? In short, she looked like dead meat again, for like the third time. But then the film came out and it turned out that Laurie survived, which was actually a much more fitting storyline. It was also handy since Jamie Lee Curtis was pretty much the film's biggest selling point in the marketing, and cutting off her ability to return for a sequel would have been madness, madness as well, in business terms. Gotta think about them stacks, after all. As for the first draft, however, it turns out that the original ending would have seen Laurie attacking Michael with a screwdriver after he shugged off being shot multiple times while he choked the life out of her. Sadly, we would have had to watch her die in his hands before he again disappears into the night to kill some more, which is about as deflating a story as when she was killed in the opening act of Halloween Resurrection. Still not happy about that. Imagine the gall of bringing back such an iconic survivor from the dead to then kill her off again in even more disturbing fashion. That is not the recipe for positive fan responses. Look it up. Look it up in the cookbook. It's not there. 3. Rocky Almost Met the Pope now, this isn't strictly new news, but a delightful story over on Screen Crush has reminded every Rocky fan ahead of the release of Creed 2 that Sylvester Stallone had some interesting ideas for Rocky 3. Back in 1979, Stallone spoke to Roger Ebert about the sequel and his grand plan, which would have included one of the world's most recognisable landmarks and God's appointed representative on Earth, which is exactly what you'd expect from a boxing movie, isn't it? Here's how he described it. Rocky's last bout will be in the Roman Colosseum, carried worldwide by satellites, Sloan said, pulling his audience closer with enthused excitement. Can you see it? Rocky in the Colosseum, the last gladiator, and for training, running up the Spanish steps? And Rocky's deeply religious. Can you imagine him inside St. Peter's? I'm seriously going to try and work in an audience with the Pope into the film. I don't know. Maybe with this Pope, he'll go for it. If he don't, we'll get another Pope. We get another Pope. Just like that. Okay, okay, Sloan, okay. Stallone also later told Ebert that he wanted Rocky to drop dead at the end of the movie in a taxi after his victorious final bout, presumably because he'd been smoked down by God for suggesting they simply get another Pope or something. Praise be that he changed his approach on this one, though. He did say in the same interview that he didn't think people want to see Rocky when he's 80, and there's a very real chance of that with the Creed series. 2. The Percy Jackson writer trashed the movie before it even came out. There's a long history of authors not liking the films other people have made of their books. Stephen King famously wasn't a fan of lots of them, including The Shining most notably, and he is far from the only one. Seems a good rule of thumb to actually involve the writers in the filmmaking process, just to be safe and to stop them from publicly trashing the movie like King did. Because they will trash it if it's poor, and sometimes they won't even wait for it to be made and released, as is the case of Percy Jackson author Rick Riordan, who has this week revealed emails he sent to 20th Century Fox telling them what they'd done wrong with the film's plans. Actually releasing the emails now is an incredible bit of subtle shade since the film basically flopped, but we're all here for the tea. Particularly interesting is how much sense the author's emails talk. For instance, on the weird decision to age Percy to 17 years old rather than 12, and the comment that the script is so terrible it thrust him into despair. The insane thing here is that the studio appears to have simply ignored him and moved on with their original plans, which is... Ooh, ouch, painful. That's not very nice. 1. Birds of Prey has a new title. And it's really weird. 
even the most ardent critics of Suicide Squad probably enjoyed something about Margot Robbie's performance as fan favourite DC character Harley Quinn. She might have been badly written, overly sexualised and saddled with terrible co-star characters, but she looked very good and pretty much everyone copied her outfit for Halloween, including Adam Cleary if you're so inclined to take a look. Very solid costume, you can't argue with that sort of brand power. It was inevitable that we'd get more of her, with Robbie leading a Harley spin-off which is directed by Kathy Yan under the Birds of Prey banner. Sadly for Warner Brothers though, that title wasn't really selling the idea of Harley's involvement enough and since they couldn't get away with calling it Harley Quinn and some other people, or Birds of Harley Quinn, or something similar, they've given it a title they seem to believe is a good idea. And that title is Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn really rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Let's be honest, this title is really Harley Quinn is no longer in an abusive relationship with the Joker, we promise guys, which I would have gone for, that's a good title, as Nick has clearly no other aim to the one that they've given it, but fantabulous. That really is so messy, it sounds like something I've scripted, so I'm sorry, I have to deal with that. But yes, that is the end of Insane Things. <laughs> which other strange movie and TV stories belong on the list from this week? Which has tickled your pickle most fervently? Share your pics below in the comments thread and come back next week for more nonsense from me. In the meantime, thank you for coming along and I will see you next week. Thanks for watching.